Welcome, everybody, to podcast 17 of the Black Dag Confessional. The Black Dag? The Black Dog Confessional. What dog? It's been, it's been a... Uh, did you forget the name of it? I did. You know, we could have rebranded. June, you know? We, we could have rebranded it and changed the name at that point. We could, like like Puff Daddy went to P. Diddy. Oh, just so people don't keep coming up to me and going, so why is it the Black Dog Confessional? And I have to go, have you ever met Fernez? You got to go ask him. I have no clue why it's the Black Dog <laughs> Confessional. <laughs> I don't. You're just that guy. You just show up and hang out, right? Man, that's what I do. And I start watch parties. Oh, good. Hey, you know, I just want everybody to take note of Chris's hat right now. He's got it slightly covered, but that's one of the hats that he's bought since he's got a boat. It's actually uh, my buddy Bear's uh, charter fishing company. Oh, so if you're looking you for go. a good charter out of Port Canaveral, look up Snake Eyes Fishing. There you go. Little fish with that. Little, Bear little, Bright. little plug for Bear. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, we are back. We uh, we took a little bit of time off during the summer because we were spending time with the family, going on vacations and stuff. Chris was on his boat, you know, doing those things, good therapy stuff for uh, our personal lives. Um, but today we have a special guest. We have Miss Courtney Butler. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Good, good. Good. Um, so is this your first time ever doing a podcast? This is, yes. Oh, well, welcome. You're with, you're with me and Redbird and Jesse, so you're yeah. good to go. This is our 17th, so we're essentially pros at yeah. this now. <laughs> we're, we're OGs at this point, right? Stop. Again, dude, 40. Stop. I can't. I, that, Actually, 40, that would make you an OG. Yeah, but you, you don't say OG. <laughs> Ice-T says OG. Ice oh, Cube oh. says OG. Steve Bernays does not say OG. <laughs> oh, man. What do I say then? Is there something that really We've just been around for a long time. We're old guys. Oh, okay. Okay, we're old guys. Yeah, okay. we can pretty much, well, you, because you're older, can get the old guys rule shirt. There you go. How much How much difference are we? Well, I'm 38. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, there, there you yeah. go. Yeah. yeah. You just look older. It's cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, anyway, today uh, we brought Courtney on the show because um, I met her a while ago, and uh, it was actually after we had Josh Vandegrift on the show, uh, where Josh had talked to us about um, how, one of the ways he deals with his PTSD. Um, and that was through yoga. So we brought Courtney on today because uh, I'm going to have her talk about, you know, how everything started with her um, and go from there and talk about how what, what therapy she uses and, and, and so on and so forth. So sounds good. Sounds good. All yeah. right. Good. So tell us a little bit. Uh, you're obviously you're a military vet. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I'm I'm um, Air Force retired. I served uh, in the Air Force for 14 years. Wow. Yep. Um, medically retired. For PTSD, so um, I did uh, four tours to Afghanistan. So, how long is each tour usually? Um, for the reserves, because I was a full-time reservist, so the first uh, tour was just a couple months. Um, the second one a little longer. They kind of kept building after that. <laughs> um, was there? A but I really wasn't there as long as a lot of the service members are. Was there a break, a, a decent break at least between each one, or was? Oh it? yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Very much so, yeah. Gotcha. So, uh, you so you did reservist for fourteen years? No, I was active duty for five years. Okay. And then I got off of active duty and realized I couldn't leave the military. I liked it too much for some reason. Oh, that's no. awesome. <laughs> no. And I went back in. So six months later, I went back in and actually found a full time reserve position with the 920th rescuing here out of Patrick Air Force Base. Oh, that's awesome. Now you're yeah. you're fully retired now. Yep. Um, how old were you when you got in the military? I was 19. Oh, wow. So young. Yeah. I, uh, I kind of uh, joined on a whim. Oh, really? Like, yeah. what, what brought you to that? What, what made you think, hey, you know, well, military sounds like a good I idea? Well, I grew up in Flint, Michigan, and uh, thought, I'm not really sure what I want to do with my life. And my parents really wanted me to go to school, but they didn't want to pay for it. <laughs> so I thought, well, what a great way to pay for my school by, why not? I'll go in the Air Force. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, you get so, that, and then when even you get the GI Bill and everything else. Absolutely, yeah. Um, it worked out really well. And it got you out of cold ass Michigan to hot ass Florida. Yeah, so. exactly. Exactly. Win win. Yeah, yeah, he's like, yeah. Well, actually, yeah. you probably got her to desert first, where it was probably a lot hotter well, than Florida. First, it was Korea. For, yeah, I went there first. That was my first uh, tour of duty, so that was interesting. Um, and then here to uh, Patrick Air Force Base. That's awesome. Yeah. So you, you get in the military. Um, did you have any type of uh, issues before, any PTSD issues before, or was it military related or life related? Uh, no, it was really, it was mostly military related. I did end up, um, after my last uh, deployment over there, I ended up going through a divorce as well. So that certainly compounded my PTSD issues. Um, so it just kind of, it just after each deployment, it just seemed to get worse and worse and worse. Whereas when I first, my first uh, deployment, I didn't realize anything, 
you know. Um, but it wasn't as bad that first time we went over there. We went over there in 2005, and it wasn't nearly as active as it was by the time my last tour, which was 2011. Gotcha. So, now, yeah. uh, you go over there. What You said you started noticing signs of, of PTSD. What, what kind of signs were you noticing? So when I got home from my third uh, tour there, I came home and I was – very easily agitated um i at the same time would hold back a lot of things i wouldn't talk about um how i was feeling how i was upset it just it just seemed to come out more in anger and that's when i realized that i really needed to go and talk to somebody um and luckily i was already working towards a degree in the mental health field so i um, new people in that field that I could go talk to and then eventually did um, go seek you know therapy for quite a while and um, it was actually through therapy that I found yoga gotcha yeah so it was my therapist at the time that um, introduced me to this program called yoga medics and um, and I actually ended up going through her program It was like an eight-week program and I went through it like a few times because I really just liked it that much. <laughs> so, but that was your first time ever doing yoga. It wasn't like something you had in your past. This right. Was it? Right. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So, uh, I want to get back to uh, some of the symptoms that you saw. Um, obviously, you said you had anger stuff. Was there anything mm -hmm. else? Like we've talked to people that have talked about, you know, lack of sleep. Um, you know, uh, maybe being emotional in situations where maybe it wasn't the right place to be emotional. Like things were affecting them differently than. Um, Absolutely, yeah. Definitely, d what sleep was was not happening. Um, I feel like the difference between men and women with PTSD, from what the people that I've talked to, is that you know, women we usually share our feelings, our emotions, and whatnot. Um, men, for the most part, seem to kind of hold back on that. And it seems like when PTSD, when we experience PTSD, women seem to then shut down, whereas men are more kind of breaking open in a sense. It's, gotcha. It was really interesting. So, and of course I was going and I deployed with my husband at the time too. So, and uh, we were combat search and rescue. So he was on the aircraft when they would bring in, when they go in and rescue people, whether it was from our, our own military or if it was local Afghanis. And um, it just, so it, it created that tension between us for sure. But yeah, lack of sleep, um, easily agitated, uh, it just, and I didn't really know what was going on, you know. And, and I was also, like, really threw myself into work and school. And I was working full-time. I was going to school full-time. And I was even volunteering as much as I possibly could to, like, start to spread the word about PTSD, not even realizing it, that that's what I was starting to really deal with. Gotcha. So yeah. it, was, it was almost like um, that was your one of the ways that you were trying to deal with it yeah. Without realizing you were dealing with it that way, you were kind Absolutely. of, you know, re reaching out without knowing you were reaching out in that kind right, of way. Right. Right. Um, what What actually brought you to the point? You said at one point you just realized I need help. Like, what was there like an epiphany moment? Was there like one time where you're just like, okay, maybe that's uh, I'm crossing the line, or maybe there's something going on in my head that I'm thinking yeah. about. There was a couple a couple things. Uh, the first time um, after our third deployment. Uh, my husband and I got in a fight and I ended up throwing like the remote control across the room and I didn't you know I wasn't one to like throw things or break things or anything like that when we fought and I thought oh this is this is not good <laughs> I think I need to talk to somebody about this but um, and then I ended up going over there a fourth time because again I was throwing myself into work throwing myself into everything and by then I was actually divorced and when I came back from that was when it really hit me and I shouldn't have been over there that fourth time what was your what is your what was your role in the military um, I was um, administrative but I did um, like computer network security and stuff um, the cool thing about the reserves is you're actually with your unit so you're not um, so I'm there helping those guys you know have their calm up and going so that they can get out and do missions and whatnot um, so it was making sure the networks are running make sure you know even helped Intel out here and there what do you think, um, obviously you said during your deployments is when you think some of this started to kick in, was, was it the separation from being, not, not being on, on the mainland, was, were there things going on specifically that were, were triggering things? Absolutely. So 
uh, the first time we went over there in 2005, we got, I'll, this is a great story. We got our first rocket attack. And um, this is how I earned my, uh, my um, nickname, Combat Courtney. <laughs> because we got our first rocket attack. And it just blew my mind that someone there was just trying to kill us all. <laughs> and I know that sounds so silly and so, uh, you know, it just had this moment of, holy crap, there are people here that actually want to kill us. So I remember going into work right after that because it happened at like four in the morning or something. And I rush in there and I'm talking to all these guys and you know, with reservists, they're usually a little bit of an older crowd. So they've been to Iraq, they've been to Desert Storm, they've, they've been doing this for a while. And here I am the newbie and the only female over there too at that time in that group. And uh, I was like, do you, got, you guys, do you realize that there are people here that want us dead? Yeah, Courtney, we know. <laughs> no, 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 I don't think you get it. Like, yeah. they want you dead, they want me dead, they want, you know. And so after a while, me just, like, having this moment, they're like, okay, combat. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. You got you got the nickname locked in. Yeah. Yeah. So it was that. And then, of course, as each time we went over there, the rocket attacks were, it wasn't just once every couple weeks. It was every day, multiple times a day. And those things, you just didn't know where they were going to land. You didn't know, you know. Um, we had a few that were really close. Luckily, we, while I was there, nobody ever got hurt. Um, but it was just really scary because it, it just, you never knew. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, now, now, ho now you're home. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything that bothers you now? Like Absolutely. I do not like the 4th of July. <laughs> I do not like, I don't like fireworks. It's, it's one thing, if, honestly, if I go and I and expect to hear them, but it's like when you're sitting in your house in the neighborhood and they're going till midnight, 1 o'clock in the morning and whatever, and you're, it's just unnerving, really, really unnerving. Crowds, I'm not a big fan of crowds, um, even even still, you know. Now, why, why are the crowds? Um, I think just... It's just always being aware of your surroundings, being su just hyper vigilant, um, and I think just having that many people around me, just it just it's just something about it. And of course, when where I was in Afghanistan, it was a really crowded base. You know, you were always because we had, um, you know, every branch of service there. We also had all of the NATO forces, all the national, you know, international forces there as well. Um, you didn't know as a female too over that you had to be vigilant to you know if there were males you know trying to harm other females or that kind of thing was something too that we had to worry about so gotcha you just always you know check so in. the totality of things kind of started to put you into this uh this, this mode of ptsd absolutely um so now you come back you you're back in the states you go back to trying to resume what would you don't want to say a normal life because a normal life for you is dealing with ptsd absolutely you yeah. know but you, you try to go back to what it was before you left but that's not the same right so right. You, you come back you started to see anger issues or, or whatever was going on with you there um do you think all these to this totality of stuff uh, led to the divorce and and or was that just something that was boiling anyway um absolutely absolutely um i think that and the fact that we didn't really we weren't given tools in the military to really deal with that either to you know talk about it um that kind of thing not that you know we didn't try at some point to seek that out on ourselves but um you know the military also they don't really maybe it's changed i don't know but um they don't really promote talking about it or dealing with it or you know how long you been out now Oh, gosh, I've been out for 2019, so I officially retired in 2014, but I hadn't really, I was kind of in that little place where they, you know, you're, you're no longer participating, so that's been probably since 2012, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, just kind of waiting on paperwork and stuff like that. Gotcha. Yeah. So you come back, you stayed here in Florida after yep. you got out of Patrick Air Force Base? I sure did, yep. What kept you here? Flint, Michigan was too cold and uh, the water there. No, um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, too cold. I made my life here, you know, 
Um, I really, I really love living here, and yeah, absolutely, too cold. <laughs> yeah. So eventually, you got in. You started saying, "No, you're here. You're trying to get back into your normal everyday routine." Mm-hmm. Um, how do you go about? How did you go about that? Like, what was like employment? Like, what was life like? What was normal conversations like? Like, how did all that change for you? Everything changed. Everything changed when you first of all when you, you know, announced the military hey, I have PTSD and I'm trying to get help, you're automatically kind of put aside as even, um, you know, your fellow coworkers, your fellow uh, airmen, they don't treat you the same. You know, that, that camaraderie then disappears. And you really need that, I think, when dealing with something like this, you know. Um, that was really hard. Uh, is that because they look at you and think that you're damaged goods or is that because – they're afraid that what they say could bother you. I mean, what do you think is the reason? Probably like all that? of it. Yeah. Probably all of it. But the first thing that came to mind when that all started happening was like, oh, don't don't talk to her. Or a lot of, um, and I've heard people talk about the people this way, like, is that person faking it? Or are they doing this to try and get some kind of benefits, you know, out of the military, out of the VA, that kind of thing. So then they start questioning everything, you know. Right. Yeah. What did you see? What what happened to you that gave you PTSD and and oh yeah yeah. Absolutely. So a big thing that I've learned with this is you cannot compare war wounds at all with people. You know, I know that I wasn't in the helicopters. I wasn't I wasn't the one flying in rescuing people by any means. I understand that completely. But being there and worrying about. like I said, the rockets every day. I was married at the time, so even worried about my husband dying <laughs> in the aircraft, you know, that was a huge thing too. And I had to keep it all together to do my job. So that was, yeah, it was hard. What do you think, um, if you could pinpoint like one moment where you were just back here, I know you talked about the throwing the remote thing, but like one time where it was just like, all right, how do I, I need, I need help. Like, were, were you going through like any major depressive states? Any, uh, any times where you were just like, I, I can't deal with this anymore. I, I will be totally honest. Um, and I do this for the benefit of others. Uh, I, I do like to share my story about this is there was a point after my last time of being over there in Afghanistan, I came back, I didn't have a job. I didn't even have a place to live because when I deployed, I deployed this time as a single person, gave everything to my spouse, that I'll just figure it out when I get back. Um, I came back and I, I was ready to end my life. I was ready to just call it quits because I had, now I'm divorced, I had no job, I was just kind of couch surfing with friends um, to where I, I actually called my ex-husband at that time and and uh, and we you know he helped get me some care that evening because it was it was that bad gotcha it was that bad um, I mean that's the totality of circumstances too yeah. I mean it wasn't just one thing at that point there's yeah exactly you know and it's it's you, you come back now you're you're here you're out of the military you're you're divorced you don't have a place you're trying to trying to find your worth in the world right. and what you're uh, who you are, you, you, yeah, your you, identity. you, you gave your identity up, yep. you know, and what everybody knew you as is now done, yes. you know? So how do you rebuild that? Yeah, you know? that was, that was, that was very, that was a long, slow, difficult road, but it was honestly, it was yoga that brought me back to life, so to speak. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, when you were, uh, working through all your stuff, mm-hmm. I mean, obviously you got introduced into this uh, eight-week program with yoga. Mm-hmm. Um, well, hold on. So how ahead. does it start? So you get your help that night, but then do you go to the military or, and say, hey, look, I'm having some issues, and they, they set you up with a counselor or a psychiatrist, or did you have to go find one on your own and say, hey, this is what I'm dealing with. Can you help me? I had to go find it on my own. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Unfortunately, okay. and again, I don't know if things have changed, but the military sure did not make it easy. Um, even the VA, and I say that back then when I first started to go through stuff, uh, when I went to the VA to start to file my claim for PTSD, um, I had a female social worker tell me that I should just go home, take a nice hot bath, light some candles, and give myself a hug. 
and that I would be okay. <laughs> I'm going to make you feel better right there. I, I, I tell Chris that's to do actually, that at least uh, once a week. I say, you know? I say that's what Steve's going to do when he leaves here. Yeah. I right. know. Like, <laughs> he calls me on the way home. He'll be like, I just got out of school. My head, I got a headache. And I'm like, just go home. Take a nice warm bath, light some candles, maybe throw one of those bath balls in there, and you'll so, be okay. It's a bath bomb. Bath bomb. Oh, that's <laughs> what it's on. I like the lavender. It calms you. <laughs> so anyway, so do, you, so do you have to bring your own? diagnosis from your own private shrink or psychiatrist to the VA and say, Hey, look, this I is what, it. okay. Yeah, that's how I did it. It doesn't necessarily have to be that way, but that's how I did it. And did they just accept that? Or did they say, okay, well, that's cool that you have this one, but you know what? We're going to make you go talk to our own. Pretty much. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now yeah. what do they do? Um, so now you're part of the VA. Yep. Um, this is prior to your medical retirement or. Yeah. So right before, right before I was medically retired, like that's, the, the Air Force announced me, hey, we're putting you in for medical board, meaning you're getting medically retired. And they make that decision. Yep. Right. Okay. Yep. Um, I honestly would have stayed if they wouldn't have kicked me out. I would have stayed. Um, but they were like, nope, you're done. <laughs> and uh, so, and then that's when I started going to the VA. I had a, um, a couple really good friends that kind of knew the VA system. And that's where it's helpful for veterans to get together and network so that they learn you know how this system works um so that's how that all eventually got started gotcha um interesting so now you're tied into the va system mm -hmm. um they medically retire you at a, a at whatever level they decide they're going to retire you at it yep so they retired me so the air force started um so when they do a medical retirement they usually do a temporary retirement first so they first temporarily retired me at 70 percent and then I that had sounds almost like a suspension with pay. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. But you're not getting paid. Although oh, it really? should have been paid. Oh, really? Yeah, that's a whole nother. Okay, so it's a suspension without pay. Yeah, yeah, I should have been paid. But um, <laughs> so then I had to go back in six months and meet with the um, psychologist there on base and give them an update. Well, at that point, I had I had just started teacher training, so when I went back six months later, I had found yoga. You know, I was I was doing a little bit better, um, and and but I was still dealing with a lot of the symptoms, a lot of depression. Still, again, still trying to find my identity after losing all this, being in the military, right? And um, so then they retired me at fifty percent. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, that didn't make me too happy. But so you're doing a little better now. So instead of that said, yeah, you yeah, exactly. Now. So we're yeah. just I'm like, but if you take away my money, <laughs> it might not do so well. Yeah, right. <laughs> you're like, if I'm broke, I'm probably gonna go back to being yeah, pretty depressed. Yeah, exactly. You know, so like. yeah, um, so I wasn't too happy about that. But and then the VA when they so I have two different ratings. So I have the rating with the Air Force, fifty percent, and then I have my seventy percent with the VA. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, so that's good. Yeah. So they they can't change theirs. I can always go back and fight for more. Mm. A lot of people have told me I should. I do not want to fight that battle right now. It's yeah. exhausting. Yeah, that probably is just as damaging as you know anything it, else. It, it you know? really is. If you don't get PTSD from that, yeah, <laughs> like right. no kidding. You know, it's yeah, that's a headache. Gotcha. Yeah, um, yeah I, I can't even imagine. We we understand bureaucracy. You know, we see yeah. how long it takes things to get done. A lot of times, um, I couldn't imagine. You know, being a number. Yeah. And, a, and a pile of stack of papers and just somebody going, all right, Courtney, you're number 73. 73, come on in here. Right. You know, well, you're 73 here. out of 5 million or, yeah. you know, exactly. you know like 50,602. It's like the scene in Beetlejuice where they're sitting there at the end. And he's yeah. like, oh, God, oh, you know. <laughs> See, again, showing your age. And that's why you can't use the terms OG and, <laughs> quote, we on dat grind. <laughs> Because you just made a Beetlejuice reference. So, but see, I try to keep you on your toes to try and keep you up with the street lingo, but you apparently. <laughs> How are you up with the street lingo? I'm on the street still. You sit in an office all day. <laughs> <laughs> that, you're only on the streets because it's not hockey season. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you shut your face. Um, <laughs> I think Jesse's been throwing up the one minute for like oh, the have last you? five I just minutes. thought he was going, good point, good oh, point. That's, that's what I thought that was. <laughs> oh, excellent point. We'll talk on that some more. <laughs> All right, what we'll do is we, we're going to take a short break, and then we'll be right back. We're going to talk more with Courtney on this.
Hello, America. We are Ruthless Politics, Vladimir Putin's favorite podcast. Hello, American podcast listeners. I am Vladimir Putin. I like this podcast. I like this guy, Trees. <laughs> Kid groaning, not so much. Tune in every Tuesday for Ruthless Politics Podcast, live from Moscow. <laughs> Just kidding, folks. Live from the Space Coast Podcast Studios in sunny Florida. No, no, but for real, every Tuesday, check it out. And you could see it on the YouTube, the Facebook, and the Twitter and Instagram. Are you new to a leadership position? Are you finding it hard to deal with certain personalities in a workplace? Maybe you're trying to reshape your organizational culture to increase your retention, your readiness, as well as your performance of your individuals on your team. Hi, I'm Stefan Williams with High Bowl Leadership and Development Training. I welcome you to contact me to kind of explore some things that we can do to help you with your people needs. We're in the business of human capital performance on the professional side as well as the personal side. If you're looking for a motivational speaker to open up your convention, contact StephanWilliams.com. If you're looking for someone that's going to help you redefine your own personal leadership style, contact StephanWilliams.com. If you're just looking to take your team to the next level, contact StephanWilliams.com, and that is S-T-E-P-H-O-N Williams.com, Habu Leadership Development Training. We look forward to seeing, hearing, and working with you. All right, we are back from break. Uh, we are currently sitting with Courtney Butler. Uh, we've been talking about PTSD and, uh, you know, her time dealing with that and how she got to where she is at now. Um, so we're talking about, you know, you're, you're dealing with the VA, you got your disability or your medical retirement aspects. And, um, now you're, you're technically part of the vet system. So do you continually have to go have meetings there? I, I, um, I do see a couple doctors there still. And um, I'm very lucky to have one of the, um, the psychiatrists that I see. He's also a yoga teacher. Oh. So it's really, I'm very, very lucky and very grateful for him because um, we don't deal with things through meds. Gotcha. You know, we talk a lot about living your yoga and breathing and what that can do for me versus like, hey, let's just, you know, die, you know, give you a bunch of, prescribe you a bunch of different medications. Yeah, and turn you into a zombie. Exactly, because yeah. I was that for a while. Yeah, that's just, that's not a life to live no, either, you know. No. Um, you know, we, I had never even thought about the yoga aspect for dealing with PTSD until Josh Vandegrift came on the show. And um, when Josh did the podcast with us, um, after we were done, he said, you know, man, I totally forgot to mention that I do yoga. That's like something that has really helped me. Yeah. Um, so then I came over to the yoga garden and I met with you and Loren and we sat down. Um, it, it was cool. It was good to hear that there was an alternative form of dealing with PTSD rather than continuously over medicating people right you know because that usually is the cure-all they throw medicine at something and then uh, well if that medicine doesn't work we'll take you off that one you can try this one exactly you know until you're looking at a zombie did yeah. you actually do yoga or did you just go sit down on no, a yoga no, mat no. i sat down on a yoga mat did you need help getting back up <laughs> um uh, questionable did um, you did you sit crisscross applesauce because <laughs> that's even, a yoga pose <laughs> that, that is. you know i did when i was a kid we called it indian style but apparently you're not allowed to do that anymore oh, so it's crisscross God. applesauce crisscross applesauce <laughs> okay um uh, all I know is every time I, when my daughter was little, we'd go to the school and they go sit down to crush cost applesauce. And I'd be like, okay, well, you know. Yeah. Um, so answer the question. Did you need help getting back up? I did not. I um, I wasn't like, graceful. I mean, I was just imagining like, up. like sitting down there and crisscross applesauce like a weeble wobble. Like yeah. you're trying to get up. And just <laughs> no, the problem was your leg starts to go numb after a few minutes. And I was like, we're going to finish this interview because I can't feel the lower half of my body. You know? Uh, <laughs> but... You know, uh, getting back into the yoga aspect, Josh talked about it, and he said, you know, man, he, he was – Josh's story is – I mean, it's real. It's a real – it's a heartbreaker. I mean, here he runs up on – it. he's a firefighter who runs up on his brother who had just gotten hit by a car and is now deceased, you know. Yeah. I mean, this is a guy – knowing Josh as long as I had, I mean, I've known him since he was a kid. I mean, when his mom got cancer and his dad wasn't around, Josh raised his – raised those oh, kids, yeah. you know. That it, he had his he had his brother Micah and then there was Josh or um, uh, Nate who was the youngest, and I mean at that point I mean Josh's mom was in treatment there was so much going on 
those were like his kids, yeah. you know, and then to see his brother like that, I mean, that be like watching your child die in front of you, yeah. you know, and you know, from that, he just was never able to go back to work. Um, he tried, but there was no, there was no care for that type of stuff. You know, there was, there right. was no discussion on that. It was very limited. Um, you right. know, and the thing we talked about with him was the same thing you kind of said, the military and we've talked about in law enforcement is that everybody's an alpha personality or for the most part. And so you don't even want to say that you have that or right. possibly bothering you because you don't know what your peers are. Like, like you said, you, when you spoke up that you were having issues, then people started to shun you or not not be around you and give you the support that you probably should have gotten mm-hmm. to to help you through that yeah and that or you get the fear of, of uh well maybe i'm not gonna have a job anymore if they Absolutely. know about this or maybe i may not get that next job because you know now people are gonna be talking about me maybe i'm maybe not oh, maybe i won't be that guy that gets picked because they're like oh yo you know, maybe he's got a weak mind or you know maybe he's too sensitive you know Absolutely. and that's and it's a stigma that goes along mm-hmm. with it that's totally wrong you know anybody who would have looked at josh's history would have been like, man, this is a dude who stepped up every single time in his life, even when he was 17 years old, and he had to take care of all of his younger siblings who were very young at the time. Mm-hmm. He stepped up and took that role and did all of this all these years, and then this was just it, you know? And, I mean, I couldn't imagine running up and seeing, I mean, the kid that you raised on the ground twisted up, you yeah. know? Um, so now you – so when we're talking to him, he said, uh, you know, you need to talk to somebody that does – does yoga you know and i was like really and he's like yeah that's how one of the ways i deal with it 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 calms me down it changes my breathing it changes my mm-hmm. thought pattern mm-hmm. puts me in a better place um but it was something that he needed yeah you know and then so when i came over and talked with you all it was it was cool because i, I reached out to shauna shauna had said no you got to meet courtney yeah. courtney is exactly who you need to talk to um and so, you know, everything works in circles. Yeah. Everything happens for a reason, it you know. Does. Um, look, Chris is looking at me. Yes, Chris, you're here for a reason, too, <laughs> to entertain me right. and make me feel young about myself. Thank you very much. Again, <laughs> I'm younger than you. Uh, but once again, I look younger. <laughs> That's because you're short. <laughs> yes. Um, do, do, do. Uh, <laughs> so They keep you around to make me look tall. Yeah. <laughs> yoga. Yoga will keep you young. <laughs> yeah, you know, yoga. Will, I'll tell you what. It's it's funny. I I've, uh, I've known Shauna a long time, and you know she'll post up these pictures now of her in different positions, and I'm like, I'm like, oh, what the heck? You know, like how do you get to that point? Like every time that I think I'm like, well, maybe I'm getting too old to go out there and be flexible, then I'm like, I see people, you know, within my age range that I'm yeah. like, oh well, they can still. You know, stretch like that. That's pretty interesting. <laughs> okay. Um, I, my back hurts. I picked my daughter up the other day, and I was like, oh, my God. You know, and I was just bending down, you know. Um, that was my concern with Chris when he got a boat because I didn't think he was in the right condition for a boat anymore. But, right. you know. <laughs> got a little weight around the belly, but still really strong. <laughs> but, you know, uh, getting back onto uh, the yoga aspect, at what point did you say, this is, this is my key? This is the key for me? So, like a lot of things in my life, it kind of ended up like another whim, <laughs> like joining the military. But still, I mean, the yoga, I, I saw it in my therapy um, as my, I, I've been really, really lucky to have therapists or doctors that have a yoga background. Um, and it just is always, it just fascinated me. And it wasn't so that I could do handstands and stand on my head and one toe and all that stuff that you see. It was... Um, Everyone just looked very peaceful, <laughs> you know, um, and of course that was something I was seeking. So it was, um, you know, I, I sought it out in therapy and then I was, you know, no longer, I was waiting on my official uh, retirement paperwork from the military. And then a friend of mine had told me that there was a studio that had just opened and they were, um, we should go check it out. That was over by my house. And so, I did, and I got online, and I also saw that they were doing teacher training. And I thought, hmm, I just finally got my VA back pay. This could be something that I could put a little bit of money towards. And so, and did that. Versus history? Yeah, yeah. So when you first started doing it, was there like an aha moment, like almost instantly when you did it? You're like, oh, wait, I'm at peace? Or did it still, was it the first time, you okay, well, I'll go back and do that again. I mean, I kind of enjoyed that. And then eventually you connected the dots that, that it was calming you or it, it it took a little bit but it didn't take as long as maybe I would have thought it would have it wasn't instant but I just remember 
holding a pose in, uh, in Warrior Two, you have one arm in front of you, one arm behind you. And the thing that my teacher said at that time was, you know, we're, you know, you have your feet placed apart and you're, you know, you got one arm in front of you, one arm behind you, and you're not, but you don't want to reach so far back that you're living in your past. And you don't want to lean so far forward that you're living in your future. You want to just be right here, right now. And that was like, whew, okay, wow. And it gives me goosebumps now. Um, that really resonated with me. Well, one of the things I noticed. Uh, with that sounds yoga, like a pose you could actually do. I it, mean, stand, it, it spread is. your feet, and stick your arms out. <laughs> <laughs> it may not be graceful the first 50 times, but I'll get it. I don't think it'll ever be graceful, bud. <laughs> now, now I, one of the things I did notice, too, and this may be kind of correlated to the military a little bit, is you talked about the camaraderie you had prior to the mm -hmm. diagnosis of PTSD. But in yoga, I've kind of noticed that at least the yoga garden what i watch is that there's kind of like a family feel to it everybody uh, kind of has that camaraderie going there like everybody kind of is on that same level of thought. absolutely i am so fortunate to have been hired by loren to be a part of the yoga garden community um you, but i mean you don't even have to be a teacher to be a part of that community you can be a student you can be someone that works in the garden um she's done such a beautiful job of that uh that, yeah, I finally have that. And in fact, earlier this year, I had to go up and take care of my mother. She was um, dying of cancer up in Michigan. And, um, and then she passed in March. And I felt like I had this whole sisterhood that went over to my apartment here in Indy Atlantic, took care of my cats for me. Um, right before I got home, they went in, they cleaned the apartment. They, you know, they just, there was flesh, fresh flowers in every room. And um, it was, and it finally realized, like, oh, I have that again. Yeah, because, yeah. I mean, if you wouldn't have found that kind of help and then your mom goes through that, that could have been, Oh yeah. I mean, that could have been a huge trigger. I felt know? like I have, I feel like I have right now PTSD all over again. I mean, I don't think you, you don't ever really get rid of it. You always have it. Um, it's just then, yeah, then you go through life, and, of course, there's a roller coaster of things. And so losing my mom this year, it, it triggered it everything again you know i can't sleep the you know i mean because i watched i watched my mother die oh yeah you know? oh, I, was, so, I was in the same boat he was in the same boat. yeah so it's, it was it was just awful so it, it's kind of strange to be back in that feeling again but at least now i really you know i know what works and so i'm not you know going to the doctor going hey you need to give me this med and this med and that you know or drinking myself to death or you yeah, know no, which is a lot of people do they, exactly they, they exactly. find solace in a bottle you know exactly. um and that's just making the problem worse you Absolutely. Know, that's, i mean compounding things because yeah. then on top of that not only are you ha you've never gotten rid of that ptsd issues you never had any of this you've never dealt with any of that right but then on top you're adding alcohol to it that is now becoming a problem because you're drinking an ex an excess and right. you know now that is your escape that is your your everyday thing and then the next thing you know you're where you at you know you're, you're further down that rabbit hole how do you get back out of it you know yeah yeah um you're constantly digging that hole constantly yep. digging that hole yep. um that's one of my issues with with medic with uh, what i feel is over medicating mm -hmm. is that we're not actually dealing with the problem right we're putting a band-aid on it for eight to 12 hours until that wears off and then we got to put another band-aid on it yep um, and that could last for year after year after year after year Meanwhile, that person's missing out on key parts of their life mm -hmm. because they never got the opportunity to properly deal with it in a way that wasn't medicated or dove into a bottle. Right, right. You know, um, Chris works out. I joke with him all the time, but he power lifts. He does all that. Look, he just flexed. <laughs> Look, just, just tell him it looks okay. His muscles are big. You know, that's that's he how he deals with his. Oh, you know. are up. Yeah, but, but that's because him. I've been going to recruit straight. Yes, who was also a guest on the show. Uh, but but Chris does that, and that's, that's two plugs, Jesse. That's two plugs. That's two plugs. Somebody's um, gonna have to start giving us money. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but you uh, you you deal with some like life stress by going to work out. Yes. You know. Um, I don't work out. No, really, I couldn't tell. It's, I mean, you're just so jacked, and you just look like you're in, you look like you're ready to run through a wall, buddy, yeah. or run a marathon. The, see, look, this is bad for my self esteem, but I love him anyway. Um, no, but like for me, um, uh, you know, keeping an even balance in life, mm -hmm. um, I got to find different things to do. I love doing this, although I do it with him, um, because I enjoy this. This is. Um, there's a lot of people that are going through what you go through mm -hmm. and it brings me solace to be able to bring that out 
yeah. you know, um, even though, though I have to look at Chris. Um, but You're welcome. Chris, exactly. But Chris <laughs> and I have been buddies a long time, which is how we can rib on each other and how we can have this kind right. of conversation. Too, yeah. long. Too long, yes. And um, At some point, this is going to start paying off in my favor also. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, maybe I'll make you dinner sometime. I don't know. Uh, buy a free stack of donuts. Um, so... But, you know, get, kind of finding that balance, what that hobby is. Now, um, do you have any other hobbies besides doing yoga? Like, is there any other thing that you do that you go, oh, this is my piece, you know? Swim. Swimming has been huge for me. Being either, you know, at the pool in the water or over at the beach, either just walking the beach or in the ocean, just that has been, especially this year with everything that's happened, absolutely. I even call, I really even call it my yoga because I'm still practicing that breath work that you do in a yoga practice when you're swimming. You have to, you know, control your breath and whatnot. And um, so, yeah, that's been, that's been huge for me. This and year. you're an animal lover. Yes. Yes. I mean, that's. I have four cats. Don't dog. you look at me because your cats are probably bigger than my dogs because I have two chihuahuas. But I have a uh, chihuahua. See? Good people already, Chris. Yeah. Sure. People. Sure. He's Check her off. There yeah. we go. Good people. I bet her cats beat up her chihuahua. Yeah. They do. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so. A, you're also too old to st stop making that face. You're too old for the frowny face emoji. <laughs> That's the only thing I send him when he texts me. He's like, hey, Steve, how are you doing? A frowny face emoji. That's it. Why are you talking to me? Uh, <laughs> oh, it's before two. I it should is be sleeping. Two. Exactly. Um, so. Uh, I mean, that's a good tip, you know, you not just have one source of dealing with your, right. you know, but have multiple ways of dealing it. Yeah. Um, that's what I was going to ask. So when you started off doing yoga, it was a hobby and it was something to help with mm -hmm. your PTSD. When you started getting paid, did it ever transition to feeling more like a job and not a hobby still? Or is it still in that you're getting paid to do something that you love doing? Well, we don't get paid a lot of money to right. do what we do. Um, I know the feeling. So, so it, it still feels like a hobby. I, I really, for me, it's a way for me to still be in service to others. Okay. Because, yeah, I'm not going to get rich teaching yoga, and I don't want to get rich teaching yoga because I don't think those people – are necessarily real yogi people, but um. <laughs> yeah, but that's that servant leadership mentality. Yeah, yeah. What you learn in the military, because I mean, you don't join the military to make a million dollars. Exactly. You know, exactly. anybody who works in public service of any type of public service, you're not yeah. looking at it to get in it for the money. Yeah. Um, there's always a greater meaning. You know, like you know, having you on today um, is a greater meaning for me. The reason we do the podcast is not because this makes us rich. We don't get paid right. for anything. You know, we do it because your story is valuable to the world. Right. Um, you know, and there's a lot of people dealing with PTSD that are constantly trying to figure out that way to heal, mm -hmm. you know, and they don't know how to. Mm -hmm. So maybe it is through yoga. Maybe it is through swimming. You know, um, maybe it's through knitting or maybe it's through that service animal. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a big, big animal person. Like, I I would probably like animals more than I like people half the time. Yeah. But um, there's there's a lot that goes into those, the service animals and, and what they can do. Yeah. Um, what would be some recommendations, uh, you know, in the yoga world? What would, if you had, P, if you knew somebody that had PTSD, what would you say, you know, uh, come join us, you know, come try it. You know, I know you guys do um, yoga, uh, the yoga nights that are free that are just like donation nights. Right. Um, but that's a way to kind of introduce people to it. Absolutely. Yeah. So we, yeah, we have like a yoga for good class that we do um, once a week. But, um, you know, and a lot of people are intimidated by yoga. Uh I think anyone, especially in our careers as military, first responders, whatnot, you know, think that you have to stand on your hands or your head or, you know, bend your leg up and over your shoulder or something crazy. But those are poses, right? Some of them. Okay, are. so um, they're not completely off. No, yeah. no. No, but there's a beginner's course, right. and that's the advanced course, Chris. You are not ready <laughs> yeah. for the advanced course. No, no, no. Course. I've done the, what's the Cobra one? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. That See? can feel pretty good on the back. Yeah. yeah. I saw Willard Freeman well. chase a guy one night, and he wound up doing the scorpion. Which <laughs> <laughs> <So> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but when you accidentally get into it, I don't think you get the same. It doesn't count. It doesn't no. count. Oh, um, not really. <laughs> <laughs> no. didn't get the same meaning at all. Um, so when you meet people, uh, obviously you probably talk to other vets uh, that are going through the same thing. Say you just run into somebody at a coffee shop or have a conversation you know, uh, do you invite them? Like, how does it work? Absolutely. I, I, I'm always telling them, I, especially um, even the people they still keep in contact with from the base, you know, and I'm always like, there's a yoga pose for that, you know. Um, <laughs> but, and it's really, 
it's not, again, it's not necessarily about the physical practice. It's about the breath work that you're taught in a class, how to breathe properly, how to breathe from the diaphragm. That's going to call, you know, calm your nervous system. Um, there's the meditation aspect of yoga sometimes. You know, I end every class of mine that I teach with a guided body relaxation meditation. So, because my goal is when I teach, I just want people to walk out of there feeling a little less stressed, more relaxed. I'm not giving them a workout. I mean, to some, it may feel like a, a workout, um, but that's not my style of teaching. My style is more, you know, to hold space for people. And I think that's really important. No. One of the things I noticed is um, you'll, uh, the yoga garden will post up like different styles. Mm -hmm. Like, was it the vinyasa? Right, yep. And like, like what, what do the different ones mean? Like, okay, so like, like if you're a beginner and yeah. you don't want to wind up in the advanced class that day, but you want to go try it out, <laughs> you know, I want to go to something, you know, yeah. and you read that, what does it mean? It's probably so called beginner's yoga, right? There is beginner's yoga, yes. <laughs> and we do offer that there. <laughs> <I'm just Which laughs> That's three times today, Chris, you've been right. <laughs> three times. <laughs> Those are horrible questions, Steven. <laughs> if I want to start off, what yoga class should I take? <laughs> Yoga for beginners, dumbass. What else do you think it's gonna be? <laughs> I'm talking about like the different names. Like you know, see, I follow the Yoga Garden on Instagram. You may not, I do, and they pop up with different stuff, and I go, I don't know if I should try that one. Like that's a big word, and it sounds foreign. So I don't probably think stay right. away from the vinyasas or yasa if it's in there. That's a flowing practice. You're moving with the breath. But there's gentle. There's restorative. Restorative is really, really relaxing, where you're just on all these props, like what we call our bolsters, which are like big pillows. We have blankets, we have blocks. He just I'm, got excited. I'm getting in. He just and got then excited. it's just very <laughs> Sounds like soothing, a nap time. very calming. <laughs> very good for very good for PTSD. I started with restorative yoga when I when gotcha. I first got into my practice. And then um, yeah, and then we have different uh, such as yin, which is holding stretches that are a little bit more intense for um, anywhere to two to five minutes. Is that where they like, reposition the body into different things and you kind of sit there for a, a little while? bit? Yeah, you're, you're just, yeah, you're not doing anything. You're not standing and holding anything for that long. You're either, you know, seated or lying down. Um, but so that is it the same good. poses just held longer or are they more advanced poses also? No, nope, they're the same. They're actually, there's some very, very simple ones. It's really just getting your body into a shape, holding that so that you can get into the connective tissue of the body. So it's like getting a massage when you're done. But yin can be very, very tricky for the mind because you have to be, you're holding still for however long. Um, nah, it's a problem, teacher's not Steven. really talking, yeah, I mean, you know, it's just a very, very just quiet energy um, that when I have new students that come to yin and they're all twitchy and, you know, they can't, it's. Their yeah. <laughs> hey. Yeah. yeah, no, see, yeah. like, yeah. if I did that, I'd have to be blindfolded because anybody doing something, I'd be like, what are they doing? What are they doing? Yeah. Squirrel. What's that shiny thing? Exactly. What's going on over there? Exactly. Oh, you know, like, I'd legit need to be blindfolded for that. Yeah. And I, you know, I could probably do that if we were in a dark room. I could be like, okay, I'm holding. Yeah, okay. But if I, second I saw Chris, like, make that face he's making right now, I'd be like, what's going on in Chris's head right now? What's going on? You know? Yeah. Want to get a donut? You know, it sounds like a good idea. <laughs> yeah, let's go do that. Yeah. Do they, so do you guys, is it, do you also do like hot yoga, Bikram yoga, we don't yoga do, with goats? Uh, we do. Well, we have one of our teachers that does yoga with goats. Oh, See, that's, you threw me a stank eye when I said it. <laughs> I, I wouldn't. You say, absolutely I mean, that's did, good. Sir. You can I've connect with the goats. Answer. You're really um, just, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, <laughs> but we even have kitten yoga. So kittens just climb on you while you're doing yoga? Yeah. yeah. Nope. So. No, yeah. but you may have Steve. <laughs> I do so, love animals. Yeah. Maybe you could teach Steve the difference between a boy and a girl kitten. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, come on, man. That's, yeah, that's somehow just tricky. You've, There's you've like created, a thing. You've created children. That's somehow. okay. Yeah, that's I how like, I have four cats. So yeah, you want, you want two more? I have two no, kittens in my not. house. No, um, no. He's so not sure I, if they're boys do, or girls. I do, <laughs> No, but they're adorable. So, um, anyway, I'm sorry. We, we sidetracked. So you do like hot yoga and, and other things we have, too? Yeah, we have like a warm yoga class in the mornings. At 5 a.m. and I think she warms the room up to like 87 degrees, maybe. I don't suggest that for PTSD. <laughs> yeah. Might make you a little. It makes me angry. <laughs> I don't like to be hot <laughs> and trying to stretch. And whilst what is just dripping off of me. Um, <laughs> are those because of the heat? Are they shorter classes time-wise? Are they about the same, or does it just? They're about an hour. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. 
Now, if somebody wanted to be a, a, a teacher, like how does mm-hmm. that, or is it called teacher? Is it instructor? It's a something? yogi. Teacher, yeah. Teacher, instructor. Is so. it a yogi, though? Was it right on that word? Well, y- yogis are just anyone that practices yoga. Oh, damn. Female yogis are yoginis. Oh. So, there you go. Jesse, you, Jesse, you seem to be enjoying this right now. <laughs> Jesse's getting ready to go do yoga. Um, I know. Um, he's going to get rid of the vape pen and all that stuff. He's just going to go, shh, <laughs> and, and enjoy life. <laughs> yeah, yogurt. yogurt. You'll be yogurt. Yeah. We're going to come back in, on Sunday, and Jesse's going to have namaste stickers all over his truck. <laughs> <laughs> if you go in yoga pants, though, we're talking. If you and I are talking. Yeah, then we're getting uh, off camera. We'll just put you on, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that whole process, uh, how long does that take? So uh, that took me about six months. There's different programs out there. You can do a really intense uh, teacher training for two weeks. Um, the ones that Loren has held at the yoga garden are, what, about four months? And it's like every weekend. Um, yeah, just, it just depends in different places. Um, and then, you know, it's so broad in what these teacher trainings really teach. Um, Loren so I took hers as I already had one of course but then I took hers on top of that and I learned so much more like about anatomy and stuff that's gotcha. really helpful yeah, yeah I noticed in the back room you had like the the whole anatomy set up yeah in the back. I was like why is yeah, there a skeleton back yeah, there yeah that's you know? for our, our trainings yeah that's that awesome yeah um, so you go through everything you've been through you're at a point in your life now where do you where do you feel you are now mentally spiritually however it goes like how do you feel now I, I, I feel pretty good. <laughs> um, it's been a hard year, like I said, with my mom passing. But um, I am so grateful that I have yoga. That I, and I actually, it felt really good to come home and teach again, too. To still continue to be of service to others. You know, it felt good, to it, Because you're very present either when you're practicing or when you're teaching. You know, you can't. Sure, when you practice, you can, you know, kind of go off in your mind. But teaching really brings me to the moment and so that has helped me a lot actually one of the things i noticed you've mentioned a few times now is that service to others Mm -hmm. um i think that's that's a huge thing uh i think even for anybody in law enforcement firefighting uh, you know when they retire they're still kind of like i've I've given my life to service for others like now what is my role right you know how do i identify the role and you leaving the military is what is what is my role how do i how do i fulfill that yeah. You know, um, so, I mean, for you, that's a great opportunity to be able mm-hmm. to help others. Um, yeah, I'm looking at Chris. He's like, now nah, when I retire, I'm just going to go my boat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, that's, that's I'm going to own a bait <laughs> shop in the Keys. Nice. And that's it. And he's going to grow a skull it. That's I'll what grow long hair, a beard. <laughs> Hopefully certain things will be legal by then. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> You'll really want donuts. It's really going to live out my days. <laughs> but maybe I'll have a yoga mat on the back. I tried go. yoga a couple times. It's just it, it's something that seems you have to. First, I think trying to do a video and following it is probably yeah, not no. the best way to do it. It seems like you need somebody there to show you and make sure you're getting the right. And then you have to stick with it. And I, obviously, I never did, but it, that seems like that's the best way to do it. Yeah, it's best to go to a live class too, and and then to find the instructor that works for you. You know. Now I'm going to ask this, and I know Chris is going to start talking trash as soon as I do. <laughs> Uh-oh. So I'm just going to preface it with that. Um, paddleboard yoga. Yeah. Just say it, Chris. First off, you can't paddleboard. You can't stand up paddleboard. So how are you going to start doing yoga on a paddleboard? Okay, you've had your time. Uh, he texted me one day. He goes, hey, are there, uh, are there alligators in Turkey Creek? And I went, yeah, he goes, hmm, won't be paddleboarding back there. And I said, just don't fall off. He goes, yeah, no, I fall off all the time. Yeah. So, But the goal would be. To uh, like, I see y'all will do the the paddle boarding mm-hmm. yoga, and they happen to be in Turkey Creek. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> so there's alligators all over the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, but in the river, in the lagoon. Yeah, yeah I get it. I get it. Sharks. I just. I just I, I, I'm, but also now follow that up and ask them. When was the last time you took your stand up paddle boards out? It's been a minute. All right. Oh. So, but the question because then he decided he wanted throwing knives. No. <laughs> <laughs> It was a squirrel. I saw it. I bought it. You know, that was it. Shocker. Um, so with that, have you done the, the paddleboard yoga? Yep, I sure have. How yeah. was that? That was tricky. Um, I'm not a paddle mm. boarder. Uh, so, um, yeah, I, I fell off and I didn't really care to do any really tricky postures on the board. <laughs> um, sometimes I think, yeah, you can practice yoga anywhere. You can do it on a paddleboard. You can 
practice with goats, kittens, you know, but some of that too maybe isn't quite yoga yoga. <laughs> Is it like more gimmicky than yoga yeah. yoga? Yeah. 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 So uh, the only reason I asked was because because um, like, you're gonna try. I yeah, I really want to try. <laughs> uh, you gotta understand, like I, like I'm one of those people that I'm like, oh, yoga is difficult, paddleboard is difficult. Let's, let's put them together. Let's, yeah, I can't do either up. one, so yeah. let's just. I'm not an expert in either category. But I don't even say you're class. good at either one. <laughs> Have you done any yoga ever? Like on purpose? <laughs> yeah, because I've wound up in some positions that I don't think like. Okay, like, nobody yeah. wants to know. No. I mean, like, I can do this right now. Does this count? Um, so, no, I haven't. <laughs> right. And but, you haven't paddleboarded in a year. I've I still been surfing. So, I mean, it's kind of the same. Um, no. I'm standing on a board. No. <laughs> so, Chris can't swim. Do Chris can that? absolutely swim. Chris cannot swim. He's too heavy. He sinks. No. I'm very buoyant, <laughs> actually. <laughs> Jerk. <laughs> so, you know, you get into the – you know, that's funny you brought up the whole gimmicky aspect of things. Um, I do notice that like some of the people that are actual like yogis that are really involved in it, there's certain little things that they're kind of like, ah, eh, it seems to be gimmicky. Like they don't really take part in that. Yeah, for sure. I th- and I think for like myself, it's about like living my yoga. So of course there's, again, the physical postures, there's, you know, um, but there's also kind of like this yogi ethical code, so to speak. And it's really just, you know, treat everybody nice. Treat yourself well. <laughs> you should follow that, Steve. You know. I do. Oh, well, you've been nothing yeah. but mean yeah. to me today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so. <laughs> Look, he gives me these. Like, these are my angry eyes. <laughs> you know. <laughs> my Mr. Potato Head. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, so, uh, with your yoga life, um, you say you live, live that life. Yes, I try um, to at least. You almost said she's about that life, didn't she's you? About you, that wanted life. To, didn't she's you? About that life. you wanted to, didn't you? You wanted to. Now, being about that life, there. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, I think some misconceptions come out, um, yes. like about yoga. Like some people think that it's a specific religion, or um, I don't know. Uh, I, you hear all sorts of things. Well, you can't do that if you don't believe in this, or you can't do that if you don't. It's it's a it's a religious event. It's not. It's it's spiritual. It's this. You have to have this mentality. Um, you know, hippies do that. Only hippies do yoga. Right. You know, right. like yeah. um, I believe I've uttered those words before. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Sound like something I've said. Yeah. Or or you can't do yoga and eat meat or something. I I eat meat by the way. I'm not a vegan and you know all that stuff. But yeah, yeah there's this whole. Um, Absolutely. You know, people think that you have to be flexible to be able to do yoga. Nope. So, so there is no specific religion. It's There's not no that, religion. It's, it's just a, it's, it's it's a, a philosophy. It can be a lifestyle, whether it's you show up to class, you practice for that hour, 75 minutes. It can be a lifestyle to where you try to practice that. You know, it's really about being aware and mindful all the time and kind of having that focus um, of the mind and then of course uniting that with the body once you do come into that physical practice um gotcha. but yeah not um but yeah we i and we get questions i get questions every once in a while from people or they don't want to say namaste at the end of their class because they're afraid that it somehow goes against their religious belief and where do, i don't even know where that comes from like i know what it means but like I what does it mean it hold on what okay. does it mean i thought that was like the like like go in peace type of thing Basically, it's basically saying the light in me honors, it acknowledges and honors the light that is also in you. See, look. That's not go in peace, dude. <laughs> and then you bowed like you were doing karate. I did. To Cause, you. Cause you do that. That's what you got to do. Uh, you know, I've seen her. She goes, mm. uh, so, but here's the question. Like, where does, where does that actually, where, what is the background on that word? Is it from something? Like, that people would think that. Well, it's Sanskrit. Um, that's as far as I know. That makes it, that makes it OG. <laughs> yeah, yeah so very good. much so. Yes, yes. Yeah, like, oh, it's um, just, a, it's a greeting. It's a greeting, you know, um, in, in that even Indian culture, whether it's, it's kind of like aloha, <laughs> hello and goodbye kind of thing. Cool. So, I like it. Yeah. yeah. I'm not yeah. going to use it because I, I feel like that would be impostering posing if i started going up to people going namaste no every time i call you now i want you to end every phone conversation with that this i'm just gonna end the phone conversation with hanging up on you this is what he usually does like he'll be like hey steve what do you think 
I'm like, what? what did you, you dropped off. No, I hung up on you. I went through a tunnel. Yeah, I went through a tunnel in Florida. Um, all those mountains he drives through in Florida. Right. Um, if you could give somebody advice that's going through it right now, if somebody's tuned in watching or, you know, dealing with something, what advice would you give somebody? I would, I would advise them to really seek out connection. Um, and going through PTSD, uh, you know, you're not alone. Uh, there's, you know, so many, whether it's military, whether it's police, firefighters, whether it's, I mean, everybody probably has some form of it or another. Um, it's, I think it's about just talking to someone, whether, and I don't mean like you have to call a professional, but just um, reaching out to a friend or somebody that is a good listener that can hold space. Um, and of course, yeah, yoga definitely can help. Um, it's, you know, finding, it's, it's being willing to, sometimes too it's hard because sometimes you kind of have to go and, you know, see which spaces are best for you, which classes, which teachers, that kind of thing. So it might take a little work for that because not everybody, I know I'm not everybody's teacher mm. and I'm good with that. Um, but yeah, and if anyone listening to this now and needs to reach out, I'm certainly available. I've, I've always been a, um, spoken out in the community about this when, it, when I um, first started to go through it myself. So, um, but yoga just helps. It helps because it helps you remain present. Whereas with PTSD, you live in that constant fear. So you have the fear, which is kind of that anxiety that's driving. You have that worry about the past. So then there's that depression aspect. And so yoga really brings you back to the moment. And you can do that through a deep breath. You can do it through just, just a mindful thought or action. And of course, you can come through it with you know a yoga pose or something. I think J Jesse's, uh, Jesse's over there doing it. He's yeah. actually doing yeah, it. Yeah, he's like, hmm. yeah, because uh, Jesse does. You have back problems, you know. Um, so yoga could probably definitely benefit somebody like Jesse. Who I've been told. He's like, he's like, I've been told. Well, that's what, so the stuff I've seen before. It, it looks like no matter what your physical abilities are, you can start somewhere and you can work your way. Absolutely. No matter if Absolutely. you've got back problems, leg problems, if you're obese, if you're super skinny, if you're not strong, it doesn't matter. You can. You right. can work your way. And from what you're saying, it sounds like a lot of it's also the, just the community of being there. So yes. it may, maybe the physical act of doing yoga may not help you, but then connecting with other people Absolutely. who seem to be super calm and just relaxed may help you in that Absolutely. way. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. Chris. What, what is that stupid look? Mm. Are you telling me I need to go do yoga? <laughs> You hang out with Schwartz too much at work. That's a problem. He's sitting around. You. He's like, "Hey, come on, Chris. What are we gonna talk about today? Let's go to lunch." And you're like, "Okay, that sounds like a good idea." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So we are going to be back. Well, hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. See, we did like zero real plugging of where the yoga garden is, how to get a hold of the yoga garden, any of that stuff. You said it like twice. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. What, what the hell was that? So that was it. I was going in reverse for a second. There you go. <laughs> By making a circle? <laughs> that was the reverse circle. There's not a reverse circle. Because a reverse circle just puts you back in the same spot. <laughs> How does time work, Chris? How does time work? If you take the clock and go like this, does it go in reverse? No, because time, time is not real. Time is what you feel. <laughs> Stop. You feel. Anyway, so yes, plug away the yoga garden, please. So the yoga garden is located at uh, 1482 Pineapple Ave um, here in Melbourne. We are opening up our new location at um, 5271 US1. Uh, it's at Adventure HQ, big rock climbing gym, mm -hmm. gorgeous space. Uh, we're opening September 6th. So we're going to have a full schedule of classes at the Pineapple Ave location and a full schedule at the US-1 location as well. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, our website is yogagardenfl.com. And uh, you can find all of our schedules there, um, the teacher's biographies, um, kind of figure out. The good thing about this studio that I really believe in is th the way that we, are, that we teach, that we um, offer classes for people that have maybe injuries or um, 
physical ailments or anything of those kinds, you know, to where we, um, the way that Loren structured her uh, teacher training to really work with that community, um, which is excellent. That's awesome. Yeah. So can they co- could they come in and just talk to somebody and say, hey, look, these Absolutely. are what I'm looking for, and you guys can yeah. suggest yeah. Yeah. If you this wanna, may be the good class? or Yeah, like 15 minutes before a class or, um, or right after a class ends, because there's not somebody there all the time, but usually that's a good time. I'm always there after my classes. You can look it up on the website, and I'm always up for talking to people about it because this is all that I do, and I do believe in it. Um, and they so. have a cool little garden in the back. Yeah, yeah, it's really beautiful. Yeah, so yep. community style, I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Did you plan anything? No, but I sit in there all the time. All the time? I do. <laughs> when was the last time you sat in there? Uh, actually, pretty recently, because it's over there by the O'Galley Art District. So I walk the murals, and I'll go sit in there in the back, because you nice. can, because the back's open. Yep. So you can just walk in and chill. Ooh. Look at you. Like that, huh? Yeah, we're getting the Oscar music, so yeah, that's Jesse's, Jesse's Jesse. playing us off the stage, right? Um, anyway, we're gonna be back on Sunday with Leonard Jones. He's gonna come in and talk with us. Uh, he does his own uh, little video podcast thing, and um, he wanted to come meet up, so I said, "Come on down," and uh, we'll so we'll be here four o'clock on Sunday. Look at Chris. Chris better be here on Sunday. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Courtney, thank you for coming yes, out and talking about so everything and, awesome. and opening thank up about everything. So it's very I appreciate cool. it. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you once again. And we'll see y'all later. You look dumb. <laughs>